You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. And hallelujah, once again, <laughs> we're in for a wonderful treat because it's all about the Word of God. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about or discuss today the, the knowing the importance of renewing the mind. You know, the, the, uh, the Negro College used to come on uh, some time ago when they would have a telethon and their one statement that they would make that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And yes, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. But that's why it's so important that the child of God know that in order for us to be victorious on an everyday basis, this mind, the mind has to be renewed according to what God's word says. Turn with me over to the book of Romans and chapter number 12. Romans 12, and we'll look at verse number 1. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Number 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God, renewing the mind. Wow. So in other words, that means that we, in order to remove, renew one's mind based on what God's word says, that means we have to have a daily diet of what God's word says every day. That means we need to, to study what God's word says. That's how you can renew the mind. You see, understanding that uh, we are made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. In other words, man is what is considered a tripartite being. Well, what am I saying, Dr. Jones? Well, I'm glad you asked, and I do have an answer. <laughs> All right. Over in the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, in verse 26, the word does remind us that we've been made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. The word t tells us that let us make man in our image and after our likeness. What is that? God the Father, Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The three in one, the Trinity, or the triune God. John 4 and 4 reminds us that God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So in other words, when I'm relating to the fact that man is what is con um, considered to be a tripartite being, that means that man, we, when an individual receives and confesses Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, it's the spirit, the real you on the inside that's reborn again. And so then the mind is what contains the mind, the, or the soul of man contains the mind, the will, the intellect, and the emotions. The body is what I see of you and what you see of me. So that's why we're considered to be a tripartite being. 
So the soul of man, which as I had stated, contains your mind. The mind is what has to be renewed or acclimated according to what God's word says. Because you're not going to understand the word of God with the natural understanding. All right. Now turn with me over to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy number 2. And let's look at uh, 2 Timothy 2. Look at number 15. It says, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Or in other words, it says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So study, that means you got to go over the word and go over it and go over it. See, what happens in this walk of everyday life, we have to study when you go to secular school. We have to study. And so what happens is like for the child of God, we're in spiritual school. So we still have to study. But we have to study the Bible, what God's word says. Hallelujah on an everyday basis. And that way you, you become really uh, acclimated to what God's word says and you can stay uh, refreshed and renewed on an everyday basis. But you see, it's not going to just happen by osmosis. You have your part to do. I have to be the doer of God's word and just not be the hearer only. And that's what makes all the difference. My goodness, my goodness. So we can't, you know, we're not going to allow the mind to be wasted. It's not going to be a terrible thing if we're not going to waste our mind. Because even the word of God tells us that we have the mind of Christ. All right. Let's turn over to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter number two. Book of Philippians chapter number two. And let's... Uh, see uh, what the word of God is telling us over in this particular these verses here this tells us that we have to in verse number five it says let this or allow this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus so we have to give permission uh, for to uh, have or allow the mind of Christ to be on the inside of us but that's like I said it comes by a daily process of studying what God's word says on an every, everyday basis. Very important. And so we have to apply ourselves in order to be successful in our everyday walk. Hallelujah. Over in, um, let's see, look with me now. Um, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 1 Corinthians. Uh, chapter number two, it may be second Corinthians, but let me check it. First Corinthians and, um, okay, I was right. First Corinthians chapter two. Now let's look at that and let's look at verse number 16. It says, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have what? The mind of Christ. Hallelujah. So that mind, there again, like I said, we have to renew it on an everyday basis on what God's word says. Because other than that, we're just used to doing any old thing, any old way. But that's why that mind has to be reset and refocused to what God's word says. So it's reminding us that we do have the mind of Christ. That's why some people say, oh, well, I have a hard time trying to remember the scriptures and things. No, you don't. The word just, just now told you. You have the mind of Christ. The devil is a lie. So you can be successful in your everyday endeavors. Hallelujah. According to what God's word says. Because we have the mind of Christ. Then he tells us, let this mind or allow this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. It's telling that, that it's not going to just happen by osmosis. we got to get in the word and do something. Go over this word. Study the word. Hallelujah. Go over it and go over it.
So we'll learn how to be very proficient in the things of the word of God. But see, it's a personal choice, of course. The, the Lord is not going to beat you over the head and make you do anything because it's a choice of your own free will. Because that in mind, God has made each one of us, as it were to say, a free moral agent. So now what are you talking about, Dr. Jones? Well, in other words, he's given you a will. He's given you a choice. He's, he can't make you do anything. And you can't make anyone else do anything. But when you make up in your mind that I want to do, then I set forth and apply myself to be about doing. Hallelujah. But it's a choice, you see. And so he's given us all choices. I love that. In other words, God has not made us like a puppet on a string. We have a free will. I love that about the Lord. So that means you can choose to be to do right or wrong. The ball is in your park. And then you can't even blame the stuff on the devil when it doesn't go right. <laughs> you have a choice in the matter. Okay? So keep that in mind that we have to remove, renew our minds every single day on a daily basis. Just like every day we drink physical water. Why? Because that's the physical cleanser for our bodies. It takes out or clears out the impurities in our physical body. And thank God that it does. Because if it didn't, we'd be in big trouble. <laughs> you know, see, because uh, uh, that's why God's word reminds us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, as it speaks of and over in Psalms 139, verses 13 and 14. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. So if we take care of these temples and, and, and drink the water so we can clear out all the impurities, then we're doing real good. But you see, if we don't, do not drink the water, then there's going to be a problem. You're going to get stopped up. Hello. And think about this. We have a colon down on the inside. Think about the colon on the inside of us. It's like the garbage disposal at your house. And after a period of time, if you don't clean out that garbage disposal, it gets all gummed up and, and stuff on the inside. Well, think about what it would do to your physical body. Because if you're not drinking the physical water, there's no way for the impurities to be ridded out of the physical body. And all that stuff gets stuck up in there. And that's why a lot of times you wonder why, you know, I'm dealing with this kind of illness or disease because we're not doing our part that we need to do based on what God's word says. Be the doers of the word and just not the hearers only. And as I'm just sharing in this particular uh, scenario here about the importance of drinking that physical water so that we can clean the body and rid it of impurities on the inside. So see, it's a process. Everything's a process in the word of God. But when we do it and do it right, then we'll reap the good benefits of it. I love that about the Lord. But it's your choice. It's my choice to do it, to be the doer, and just not the hearer only. But then when you do it, then you'll be happy and you'll be excited because then your body will be functioning the way it is designed and created to function. I love that. Hallelujah. That is so awesome. Glory to God. And we're talking about we want to live a long life. Well, if you don't do what we know to do, Life is not going to be too long. <laughs> but once we get in our, our thinking that if we do and apply ourselves on an everyday basis, you got it made. You're on your way. That's what I love about the Lord. It's so good. Good, 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 good. It's exciting life that we live. All right. So we're talking about renewing that mind on an everyday basis. Because it, just like I said, it just, if you don't put anything into it, it's just, it's just lying dormant and you're not getting anywhere. So if you want to elevate and excel in the things of the word of God or even in everyday life, you have to take time to study, find out the different things. Get in the word of God. Take time to study it. There again, as I said, get the scriptures that apply to you, that minister to you, and begin to learn those scriptures. You have the mind of Christ. You can do it. And you are blessed. See, our memories are blessed. The devil is a lie. Our memories are blessed. That's what we're talking about. 
And see, that way, when you renew your mind in the Word of God and, and you eat the proper types of food in, you know, in, in the physical body on an everyday basis, you're drinking the physical water to rid the impurities, hey, we got the mind of Christ. We don't have to, we're not going to be having dementia and all these other uh, 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 Alzheimer's and things like that. The devil is a lie. But see, it, it, it takes a process of doing it. You can know to do and do not do, and you, you won't reap the benefits of it. And it's a serious thing when you really understand that. You're the one that has to do it. Can't anyone do it for you? Or, you know, so you have to apply it for yourself. And, and, uh, but it's wonderful. It's exciting, family. And I highly recommend it. Get that mind renewed in the word of God. Mm, mm, mm. And, and looking again at 1 Corinthians 2, 16, it says, Who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. That means we are not dummies. Hello? The devil want to, to tell you, oh, well, you can't remember things or blah, blah, this, that, and other. You just have to tell him, to, oh, shut up. You're not, you, you don't run up anything up in this house. I have the mind of Christ, fool. You got to go in the name of Jesus. And that's what you have to do. See, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are the blessed coming in and the blessed going out. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. Praise the Lord. So we have to take the benefits of things that apply to us and, and really, like I say, be the doers of the word and just not the hearers only. Glory to God. Okay, let's look at uh, the first epistle of uh, John chapter number four. First epistle of John. Hallelujah. Oh, man, it's just so much. The, the God's word is just inexhaustible. Hallelujah. First John 4. And look at verse number 4. It says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Wow. Now that's awesome. The greater one is on the inside of us. That's why I'm always saying we can't lose with the stuff we use of the word of God. <laughs> it's dynamite explosive power happening up on the works of darkness satan and demons that's what i'm talking about <laughs> oh glory to god it's just wonderful 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 it's just exciting family there again and we find out that we have to know also just not renewing the mind but See, it, it's so many different things to, to being successful in the Word of God. But it's not a hard thing to do. It's just a matter of our willingness to do. I love that because the Lord is not going to beat you down because you don't do something. But if you don't apply it on a consistent basis, then you're the one there again, as I had stated, you're the one that loses out. But God's word is awesome. He's an awesome God. He loves us with an everlasting love. There again, he's concerned about every area, every aspect of our lives. And to the degree that we open ourselves up to him is to the degree that he can come in and assist us. I love that about the Lord. Oh, family. Now you're talking about, well, okay, I, 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 need, I need to know his guidance in my life. I need to know, all right, the guidance, his guidance. Look with me now over in, in Psalms, book of Psalms number 32. Psalms number 32 talks about his guidance. He will lead us and guide us. Hallelujah. Psalms 32. All right. And let's look at uh, number eight. And it says, and I will instruct you and teach you. Wow. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Now, that's awesome. That's our father. That's the kind of God we serve. He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. 
So when there are issues in, in, in our lives and, and we're not certain about what move we should make or what step we should take, just you call on the, the direction of the Lord and he's there for us and he will supernaturally lead us and guide us. See, that's, that's the work of the part of the work of the Holy Spirit. He will always lead us and guide us into all truth. A lot of times, and in, in, in you need to make decisions, and, and I'm just not sure. Well, Lord, what move do I make? What step do I take? Oh, God, I'm trusting in you. Well, you have to know what his word says. Hallelujah. Here it is. He said, I will instruct you, and I will teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Now, that seems like that's a father's care to me. Oh, boy. That's what I'm saying. He's concerned. He's concerned about us, and he's concerned for us. Hallelujah. And he has nothing but the best for his family, because after all, he's given us his best, and that is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about. Glory to God. Let's look at uh, real quickly over in the Gospel of John. Uh, John chapter number 14. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your truth for what your word says. Hallelujah. And now see, when you've taken time and to study what God's word says, over in John 14 and 26, it says, But the helper, talking about the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. All things that I've said to you. Now, that makes it exciting. That's just like if you have to go and take a test or something like that. Now, you've taken the time, you studied the word, or studied uh, the things that pertain to that test. Well, when you get ready to take it, then the Holy Spirit will bring the things that you have studied back to your remembrance. Oh, family, we are just, we are too blessed to be stressed. Hello. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we want to take this time viewing audience once again. We just want to extend this invitation to you. If you'll be so kind to bow your heads and just repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, your word says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I would be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I want to thank you for taking spiritual torment for my sins. I want to thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties. Your word tells me, in 1 Peter 2.24, that by the stripes of Jesus I was healed. So according to your word and using uh, of my faith, I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. I give you the praise, I give you the glory, and I give you the honor. A hallelujah. To God be the glory. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister. Amen. Well, we want to thank you. So if you have followed those instructions, you are now a child of God. Get into that word of God, as I had shared with you. Uh, find you a local uh, church in your area that you can attend and begin to be the doer of the word and just not the hearer only. Remember this, family, that this is another week of the devil's defeat. You have the victory. All right, we'll see you for the next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Mm -hmm. ah. Ooh. Ooh. You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Cold I'm a loss. So here I am, surrendering it now. Lord, hear my cry. All my knees are bowed.
pain, no pain at all. 